Bro, just stick to a flip phone or something. It's <laughs> not like you gonna be using okay. the display or nothing. So according to some of my TikTok comments, blind people don't need a smartphone. Blind people don't need a phone. It's useless. It's just, it's just a metal glass brick to us. Get a flip phone is what uh, some people have told me to do, despite the fact that in the video I, I explain how a blind person uses a smartphone independently. We're gonna unpack this. Hey, my name's James. Welcome. If you're new, I like to share my experiences living on the spectrum of blindness. So what that's like from birth. And I also like to share and discover accessibility features within travel technology or just experiences overall. So if that's what you're into, welcome aboard. So although I love YouTube and this is like my home to me, it's, I just shared that I passed 15 years of creating on YouTube as a blind creator, I also have a TikTok and I have an Instagram and I also like to share different kinds of videos on there. Hey, I live with blindness and people would like to know, do eyeglasses help correct my vision? Different in terms of like vertical style and things that are a little quicker, a little snappier. But because of the shorter length, you know, context, it's hard to fit all the context into a video that is shorter. That's why I also like YouTube for these longer format things like this, but one thing that has been bothering me, apparently it's bothering people on TikTok, that a blind person is on TikTok, that a blind person can use technology, apparently it bothers them. <laughs> Not everyone. I have a lot of great and supportive TikTok comments, a lot, but man, there are folks in there who even have to call out the folks in there who are just questionable. And it's like, are, is this bait? Are you trolling? Are you actually unable to comprehend the blind experience despite it being right there and being shown and there's a whole profile you can tap on and find tons of videos explaining giving you context as to what it's like so one of my videos that picked up a bit in the algorithm on tiktok was me unboxing the iphone 13 and setting it up and talking about that experience a lot of people despite one asking how did he know that it was gold how does he know the color never even said totally blind in the video, I said, I've been legally blind since birth with blindness. As a filmmaker with a severe visual impairment, living with legal blindness, living on the spectrum of blindness, I said visually impaired. So I tried making it very clear that like, there's still some visual information coming into my eyes. Some of those strange comments that I got were also questioning, why would I even use a phone? Despite showing again, how a blind person could take a photo or I don't know, use any of the apps because it's accessible. Also, it's not just iPhones that are accessible. And also, iPhones have had accessibility features for the blind to independently use it since the iPhone 3GS. That's 2009. Blind folks have been using smartphones independently for like well over a decade. Cool, cool. But Android, Android also has tons of accessibility features and they're great and wonderful. And if you like the Google ecosystem, it's there for you. So there are accessibility features in both these devices. There's voiceover in iPhone, there's talkback in Android, and you're able to navigate the operating system without sight. Now, in order to enable the accessibility features from the setup process, that is a little bit of just common knowledge in the community, but if you don't already know, it's one of those things that maybe you'll learn from uh, playing around with it. Sometimes if you're idle, especially on the Mac, I know this, and Windows, if you're idle, just sitting there for a while, it'll just be like, hey, I'm a screen reader. Do you need me? Are you? Can you see what's going on on screen? Uh, you want to turn me on? <laughs> not in a, in a, in a, uh, not, not in that context. And then for those of us who do still have some vision, we can make use of other magnification or text-to-speech features. So personally for me, I do use a screen reader part-time on mobile devices, but I also love Apple's Zoom. I love the Zoom controller. I love being able to just toggle that and zoom into any screen on my phone. And then on the Android side, I love the select to speak feature. I love being able to just slide my finger around and it just reads aloud things without having to have the navigation features of a screen reader on. And it has its own version of a magnification. Of course, personally, I prefer Apple Zoom, always have. It's just been like brilliant since Mac OS Tiger. <laughs> Did a whole video on that. So yes, blind people can use a phone. They can turn it on, they can navigate it. Just because we're blind doesn't mean that we don't have jobs to go to or that we don't have people to go visit or errands to run. In fact, 
the smartphone has provided so much more independence and it feels so necessary to have to participate in society, not only for sighted folks and people who are non-disabled, but blind folks especially. Like, as a blind person, I'm at home, but if I wanna go out, I, yeah, I can walk to places, but of course there are gonna be times when I'm gonna need a vehicle to get to places, whether it's the airport or go grocery shopping or doctor's appointments. And yeah, I don't drive. <laughs> and I don't live with someone to do that, so what am I gonna do? Well, we live in a great time when Uber and Lyft and other rideshare companies are available. Just being able to order a rideshare from my office and then get down to the car in a matter of minutes is amazing. It's such a great time to be blind. I say that sometimes and I mean it though. I mean, there's never been a better time to be blind. And then beyond that, of course, there is just directions, navigation. Maps are accessible on Google Maps, Apple Maps. You can navigate through a variety of ways with your screen reader to get context to where you are. There's also turn-by-turn -turn directions, not only for walking, but when you are taking public transit. There's estimated times, there's uh, tells you where bus stops are. It's great. Of course, as a blind person, I got my way cane. I know how to navigate sidewalks and streets and the city, but I just need to know where I'm going. And that's where the smartphone comes in handy. That's also why I love like AirPods and just wireless headphones because I can leave one in and uh, just be listening to the navigation. Personally for me, my choice is AirPods Pro. That transparency feature is incredible. I leave one in usually, keep one out so I can be more in tune with the traffic and listening to my surroundings. But this can then also just tell me of any incoming alerts, notifications, as well as just directions, and that is so important. The other thing too is AirTags. I made a whole video all about AirTags and the role that they could play in someone's life who is visually impaired because I did a whole unboxing and talked about them. And I even showed some of the great accessibility features, including precision tracking, which is wonderful. I've lost my cane or my keys somewhere around and quickly was able to track it with my phone and using accessories like AirTags and AirPods make so much sense for a person who's blind or low vision to just make that lifestyle even more accessible. And again, Android has its own equivalents of accessories and yeah, to each their own. Much like a smartphone, smartwatches are oftentimes accessible as well. I'm currently using an Apple Watch Series 7 and giving it a test run and honestly, the bigger display helps, but also just having voiceover navigation and having Siri tell me my notifications or when my workout has hit certain miles or milestones, or even if I just close my rings, it's all extremely helpful and a great experience. It's great having auditory feedback right on my wrist and being able to track all that. Another thing I wanna talk about is just all these updates our phones are getting. Phones are lasting longer with updates because these processors are getting more powerful, but the features are also getting so much more powerful. There's a thing called OCR. If you're familiar with technology or computers, this may be familiar to you, but it's called optical character recognition. You may have even interacted with OCR technology before without even realizing it. This is something that as a blind person, I've been familiar with for quite a few years now. In fact, it's something I used back in high school to use my iPhone 4, capture some papers or documents, and then I'd send that to Google yeah, using both ecosystems, even back then. And with Google Docs, it was able to pick up on the image that I took with my iPhone and make a, make highlightable text. So then I can then have it all read to me. Now, this is built in to the iPhone, which is wonderful. iOS 15, iPad OS 15, Mac OS Monterey, if you have uh, specific system requirements. Live text, oh, I love live text. I love this feature. Again, this was a feature that is primarily used by the blind community for so many years, but now it's just widely accessible and available for everyone. Not through special apps, it's just built into the camera app and the photos app. And of course, Android has their own apps to do this and features, but Talking about iOS 15, this is what I'm primarily used day to day. And since the 90s, Apple has been experimenting with uh, recognition of characters that are handwritten. So with the Newton back in the day to now the iPad and the scribble feature on the Apple Watch. So what it can recognize is not just like plain normal text, but also just handwritten stuff. It, probably not perfect every time, but it's pretty good. And being able to just highlight that text, copy it, have it speak to me, be able to read menus or documents or mail or anything along those lines, even for video game consoles that may not be accessible, being able to just quickly have access to what it's saying on screen and have it read to me, 
Viewfinder, image, a digital screen with text and numbers on it. Friend list online. Two, trending, party Mario. Superstars, an illustration of a cartoon character holding a die. Party bullet Mario, an illustration of a cartoon character holding a sword. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm so excited to keep incorporating live text and finding new innovative ways. Of course, if you're a student or you work and you use your phone to capture notes or whatever it might be, I definitely recommend making use of live text. This is just, again, one of those things that was considered an accessibility feature, and I think still is. And now it's just even more accessible. It's more widely available. And that innovation has just been pushed to the forefront. Beyond live text, there are other accessibility apps like Be My Eyes, where I can call a person, a volunteer, to read things to me or to help me find something. Uh, that's really cool. There's millions of people ready to just pick up that phone call and help a blind person out. So I appreciate all of y'all. But there's also apps like the magnifier. If I need to use my own eyes, if I need to zoom into something and just just try to make out something visual that isn't text related, the magnifier app is great for that. This thing is literally a high-tech digital magnifier in my pocket. This one is to my fellow Android friends. Let's talk about how I use my phone for entertainment as a blind person. I like to listen to podcasts, I like to listen to music, and I use Apple Music and YouTube Music. I watch YouTube videos on my phone, typically not visually. I have YouTube Premium, so I just lock my phone and listen to videos. Try to be descriptive with what you're doing in videos. That's something I recommend, especially when you're trying to provide visual context to something. For more produced content, such as movies and TV shows, I love Netflix, I love Apple TV+, Plus. a lot of great shows that I like to watch, and most of them are accessible. They have audio descriptions. This is a feature that you just toggle, just like closed captions. This is just a uh, narrator describing the visual elements of what's on screen. And it's usually fit in between the dialogue of movies. And it's a whole other art form, to be honest. There, there's bad audio descriptions out there and there's good audio descriptions. I've got a whole video talking about audio descriptions and how that benefits people who are blind low vision and what that's like to experience. This is how smartphones on both sides of the pond have provided me with independence as a blind person and millions, hundreds of millions of other folks around the world who live with vision loss. So I'm curious, did you learn anything? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, maybe if you didn't learn anything, do you have any app suggestions? Any apps that you incorporate into your life? If you would like to connect, those comments are always a great place to engage, but TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter are also places where I am pretty active. So feel free to find those links. I hope that you could just see different today. I'll hear you next time. Bye.